I feel, and tell me if you feel this too, but I know lots of people that I know, yeah. parents at our school and stuff, I feel like Los Angeles has changed immeasurably. In not, and a lot of that will be down to COVID, but it's changed immeasurably in the yeah. last three years. I feel like I've moved to a... I feel like the place I moved to perhaps doesn't exist anymore. Interesting. Everywhere I go, when I'm picking up my kids at school gates, when I'm meeting friends, all these things, people are talking about crime rates crime. in Los Angeles, the, the type of crime that's happening, yeah. where those crimes are happening, the manner in which those crimes are being carried out in this city. Yep. I think police feel frustrated by... I think many LAPD officers feel frustrated in the way that, that things are being done yeah. above their heads. Um, what's your thoughts on that? I know you're not the mayor. Yeah. I know you're the governor. I know you're not the mayor, but... 470 cities, but, you know, this is second... I mean, one of the most spectacular cities in the world. And, look, I'm very sensitive to this as a former mayor. Yeah. And I deeply appreciate the point you're making. I can give you statistics that bear fruit uh, to a more objective look. You, I, one being Texas has higher violent crime rates and property crime sure, rates. Sure, but that's not an answer. No one that cares. That isn't an answer. And that's why that's I'm not, not going to give answer. that. You can't just say, that's, well, yeah, but it's bad but everywhere. James, that's, that's, why, that's why I'm not giving that. I said, because we're prone to do that. you sort of that. did give that no, while not but, giving but that. I wanted, but I wanted to make the point, because no one cares about statistics. They care about how they feel and what they're experiencing. And what you just expressed is being experienced by too many people because it is the reality in cities all across, yes, this state and parts of this country. So you're absolutely right. We've got to take responsibility for that. We've got to address the issue of these flash mob organized crime groups that are breaking in, coordinating manners into stores. We've got to address the street issues in this state. We've got to address the issue of homelessness. We've got to address the issue of affordability. But the issue of crime needs to be addressed much more forcefully. We've got to hold people accountable. We've got to prosecute them. And no one can deny that reality. And I don't deny it and know this. We're not just sitting back passively. We're not waking up to this. We're doing everything in our power as state of California to support cities and county. I don't have a police force. We have no. California Highway Patrol. It's not an excuse, though, to support those efforts to go after these rings and to get these bad guys and make sure they're prosecuted. So know that we are doubling down on all of these efforts. I take this very seriously, and I don't want you to turn your back on this city, and I don't want you to think its best days are behind it. They're not. So, I mean, it feels like there's so... I feel like there's so much darkness. I feel like all of our conversations <laughs> are about COVID. It's yeah. about well, it's fear of midterms next year, all these which you yeah. must be worried about, all yeah. these things. What do you feel hopeful about I think at the it, moment? Uh, I think if, you, if we just turn down the volume, if we turn off cable news for a couple of days, all of a sudden hope starts entering in. All of a sudden we start feeling... You know, my, I'm not making this up. My mom used to say, you're nothing but a mirror of your consistent thoughts. Yeah. Whatever you focus on, you'll find more of. And if you... I mean, if we tune into the nightly news, I mean, it's exactly as you say. I mean, deep anxiety, stress... World's gone to hell. Every people break every. And if we just tune that out a little bit, start reflecting on what we're grateful for, start looking around, and realize that people that may vote differently aren't very good different than you. Yeah. We rise and damn fall together. And so I wrote this book, Ben and Emma's Big Hit, honestly, as an expression of celebrating our interesting differences. Dyslexia, of which I have, I can't read speeches. I had speech there. I mean, it's a bit of a, a, a life story for me. But focusing on what unites us. And that's a big part of the story of Ben and Emma's big hit. Is that is what made you want to write it, it? Your, yeah. your experience of, 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 of dyslexia? My experience of feeling lesser than, feeling dumb, feeling like I wasn't worthy. All the self-esteem issues, because I, I still can't read. I've never read a speech. I can't read. Really? Can't read. Uh, I can't write. Um, <laughs> ironic, I'm writing a children's book. Uh, <laughs> not lost on me. Um, and you know what? I, it took me, I probably 35 years old until I realized I wasn't dumb. And I just learned differently. My, way, my brain's wired differently. But it created a different sense of empathy and, and sensitivity to what people are struggling with. And it's informed everything I'm about. I wouldn't be governor of California if I didn't have dyslexia. But moreover, it to me informs this moment where I've got to do more and be better. We've got to model better behavior. Even in my own tweets, in my own expressions around the other side. Yes, we have different points of view, different values, but we share so much more in common than our damn politicians allow for us to consider. And I guess that is where I want to focus my energy, particularly post-recall. Please thank Governor Gavin
news, everybody. Stick around. Hannah Wanningham is here when we come back. Thank you, brother.